Now you might be thinking, he's abandoning British Airways, he's abandoning One World, he's turning into Judas. I'm not. I do love British Airways, most of the time. But having had BA Gold status for a number of years now, what I wanted to try and do is get Star Alliance Gold. Now all of the vloggers and all of the bloggers out there, you just need to search on YouTube how to get Star Alliance Gold easily. And they'll all tell you it's easiest done with Aegean Airlines. It's actually really easy to keep Star Alliance Gold from year two onwards requalification. But in year one, believe me, it's a very convoluted process and there's a real sting in the tail. So in today's video, it's a daytime flight back down to Athens with Aegean. And I'll share with you just how convoluted it is to get Star Alliance Gold. And there's a real sting in the tail, which I've found to my cost over the last week or so. It's certainly easy to keep Star Alliance Gold from years two and on with Aegean, but getting it in the first place is quite convoluted and it's certainly not as easy as British Airways and One World. And this is where British Airways really wins because you might make the mistake of thinking that I'm saying Aegean is perfect in every way based on the first part of the video. It's certainly very good, the food, the free Wi-Fi, all things that are better than British Airways to be fair on the short and mid-haul routes. But the truth is that getting Star Alliance Gold with Aegean in the first place it is convoluted. And so let's go and check out Aegean on the daytime flight in business class. And I'll share with you some of the key things you need to know if you're going to use Aegean to get Star Alliance Gold. And in fact, Just one glass in, you're already on my mind. In a few short years, Greek national airline Aegean has earned an excellent reputation for quality, flying a modern fleet of Airbus narrow bodies, as well as regional ATR and Dash 8 flights with subsidiary Olympic Air. When I claimed in 2019 that Austrian Airlines was the best Euro business class, you all corrected me and told me I needed to try Aegean. Well, here I am. Today's flight is on a one-year-old Airbus A321neo. We'll take exactly three hours and we'll be cruising at 35,000 feet. We start our journey at Heathrow's newest terminal, Terminal 2, the Queen's Terminal. With my business class ticket, I used the Star Alliance Gold Security Lane. However, it was actually quite slow. Or maybe it was me that was slow. It's perfectly possible. I head to the Lufthansa Business Lounge, and after a short queue, I'm sat in a nice, quiet area, like the happy little hermit that I am, after collecting my gummy bears, naturally. So hello again from Terminal 2 in the Lufthansa Lounge. If you think I'm sat at an awkward angle, I am. I'm on one of these rather swanky lay flat seats. These, if I can get it for you, one of these lounger type chairs, which are just behind this rather convenient wall. So these walls are really good actually because they're so private. And as you can see, there's not many people here. In fact, just one other chap. And they're, uh, it's like a little private pod type thing. Uh, so you don't have to look at anybody else. <laughs> they don't have to look at me, which is probably a bonus for them. But the one thing I really don't like about this lounge is this. And I'm sure it was done just for well-intentioned design reasons. But as you can see, it's a really nice warm day outside. And it's very bright, it's very sunny. And it, and it is actually quite warm, it's starting to warm up now. But they've put these damn blind things um, I'm sure it's just to make the airport look a bit more modern uh, Terminal 2 is quite modern I think Terminal 2 is the newest terminal they've got here at Heathrow but you can't see the planes you can't really see the runway that well you can just see a plane taking off there a Eurowings aircraft but the view is so much restricted because of these damn things we should get rid of those I might start a petition let me know if you'd sign <laughs> So let me show you what I've got here. So we've got a latte, some biscuits. I had some gummy bears, the staple diet of Germany, of course. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. And then I've got this. Now you might think that's just cranberry juice or something of that ilk. It is actually, and I quote, a beetroot, lime, ginger, green apple, 
apple juice booster shot. So they've somehow, in one easy to swallow little thimble type thing, managed to put beetroot, lime, ginger, green apple and apple juice. Let's give it a taste. That's a very eclectic taste. I suppose it's a fairly eclectic recipe, isn't it? I mean, it's a, the taste that's definitely there. Can't taste the beetroot. Not that I would want to, I'm not a big fan of it. You can definitely taste the ginger. Mmm. It is actually quite refreshing, it's quite nice. I'm not sure I'd want too much of it. You can definitely taste the lime coming through now. That hits you after you've tasted it. After you've drunk it, the lime definitely coming through there. And after a quick stop at the very nice Plaza Premium Lounge for lunch, I head over to the gate and get my first view of my whip down to Athens today. Boarding on time, I'm handed a menu, although I didn't need it as with AG and you can select your actual meal at the time of booking. So I'd already chosen my main dish today, which was veal in tomato sauce. Departing out of Heathrow, I never get bored of those amazing views, and so far so good. The seat is comfortable and the flight attendants seem very friendly. Friendlier than me anyway, and that doesn't really cut the feel down though. Flying over northern France, we're making really good time. A quick look around the modern cabin before lunch. I wonder if Patreon supporters James, Joe and Kieran would enjoy this lunch. I'm certain they would. It was delicious and very well presented. With lunch service cleared away, it's followed by a coffee and chocolates. Again, well presented and very tasty. Having watched a film through the complimentary streaming service on board, and we'll talk about that more in part two, I sit and watch the views as we begin descent over the Greek islands. You really can't beat the views into Athens, well, in my opinion anyway. Next time, I fly Athens to Manchester with Aegean, where we explore what it's like on a night flight in business class, as well as exploring Aegean's flagship Athens Lounge, with some great illuminated city sites along the way, and pioneering free Wi-Fi. So don't forget to tune in next week for part two. Oh, and some more excellent Aegean food, and my favourite, Plomari Uzo. So thanks for watching part one, enjoy the landing, and I'll see you in part two for our flight back to Manchester.